In today's maintenance video, we are going to show you how to remove and install a set of cranks on your mountain bike. Now you might need to do this to fit a nice shiny new upgraded set or perhaps for some routine maintenance like changing the chain ring or swapping out a bottom bracket. Now in this case, we're going to show you with a set of race face cranks, but the principles are the same, it doesn't matter what brand you have. Now to remove and install cranks from your bike, you're going to need a few tools and there's just a few things to take into account. Now firstly, you're going to need a soft ended mallet, you're going to need some Allen keys to either remove the chain guide or get it out of the way and to remove the pedals from the bike. So in this case, it's a four millimeter for that chain guide and eight millimeter for the pedals. Uh, yours might be a six millimeter, perhaps if you're using DMR pedals, for example, uh, or perhaps you might need a pedal spanner for that if your pedals have uh, flats on them in order to uh, remove them from the crank. Now you're gonna need a few other things here as well. You'll need a smidgen of decent quality workshop grease. Doesn't matter what the brand, as long as it's good workshop grease. Now bearing in mind that all cranks are slightly different, but the principles are the same in the way that they're attached to the bottom bracket. Race face, for example, have the axle as part of the left hand crank, so your non drive side, and it's the drive side that you remove from the bike. The other brands can be the opposite. With a Shimano crank, for example, you actually have pinch bolts that hold the crank onto the axle, and you have a little preload cap on the end that you need this specific tool for. With this race face crank, though, you have an 8mm bolt, and it's actually got a self extraction system built into it. So as you undo the bolt, it pulls the crank off the actual axle. Uh, so all cranks are slightly different, but the same principles there. So just take a little look at yours and figure out what you need to do. First up, you want to make sure that the clutch on your derailleur is switched off if it's a Shimano one. So that means this lever here, just moving this to the off position. So just so you can see that is in the down position. That means you can manipulate the lower cage quite easily. Whereas if you had the clutch on, it makes it quite a lot harder to move that a lot of resistance in there. Next step is to remove the pedals from the bike. Now, no matter what pedals you have on your mountain bike, they all undo towards the rear of the bike. Okay, so in this case, your drive side pedal will undo with a counterclockwise movement, whereas your non drive side will be the opposite. Okay, so I'm using an eight millimeter Allen key here, which means I need to get it into the back of the pedal here and it needs to be pushed down to loosen it. And now it's loose, a bit easier just to do it like this. Now, if you're using a pedal spanner, you'll do this from the drive side or the non drive side of the bike and you'll be pushing down in this motion uh, without having to actuate from the back of the crank itself. Now, as you can see, the chain will actually foul on the chain guide here. So uh, you can either remove yours or in this case, I'm actually gonna flip it until it's upside down so I can get access to pull the crank straight off. So let's just loosen that. If you can do this, I'd recommend doing it this way and keeping it on the bike. Uh, it just makes it a little bit easier and you won't lose anything as well. So it just gives me direct access there so I can have the crank and take it straight off. Now, because the crank on this bike is a race face, it means that I'm undoing it on the drive side. So this might be different for yours if you have to do it on the opposite side of the bike. Now you want to get yourself in a position where you have a lot of leverage. So I'm putting the tire effectively in my armpit. I'm going to hold the left hand crank against the chainstay, and it puts me in a good strong position to put a good amount of weight on that eight millimeter Allen key. Let's not forget that this is a crank that's attached to the bottom bracket and it could well have been torqued up very tight. Always make sure that Allen key is fully home. Can't go in any further. And obviously, as you should with any bike job anyway, make sure that Allen keys you're using are of decent quality. Make sure there's no damage to the ends of them. You're gonna be putting a lot of weight on this eight millimeter Allen key, so do make sure it can't damage your bike or slip at all. Uh, then it's a case of putting the pressure on to release it. And then as you back the Allen key out, you'll find now there's resistance. This resistance is the Allen key bolt against that self extraction system. Now, as I undo this, you'll find the crank actually starts moving out by itself. Okay, so I'm approaching the end of the axle now, so I'm expecting, there we go, the crank to slip off. Now, at this stage, you wanna make sure you get a good hold of it, carefully slide it off, and then just let the left-hand crank slide down there. Take care, because on some cranks, you'll find if there's any washers, like this thin one here, uh, it might slip off, you might drop it, it might roll under something. So just do take a bit of care at this point. I'm carefully just going to unravel the chain, let that dangle down there. And then we have our drive side crank off the bike. And now it's time to move on to the non drive side. 
Now, depending how long the crank has been in the bottom bracket itself, it might be quite stuck in there. So uh, give this a little test first. See if you can actually just push it out like I can there by hand. But if you can't do that, you're gonna need to shock it loose. So to shock it loose, you will need a soft ended mallet. And you just simply give it a sharp little strike on the edge. Make sure it's a soft ended mallet that's not gonna damage it and don't go crazy. It's literally just enough to just to tap it loose there, and then you should be able to slide the axle all the way out. As you slide the axle out of the bottom bracket, take care because there will be washers on the other side as well that you could drop on the floor. Now, before you think about reinstalling the cranks, you've got to make sure the interface is nice and clean. So you've already checked the chain ring, that's all torqued up nicely. Uh, you want to make sure that the crank arm itself is free from damage and put a very fine amount of grease on there. And uh, you also need to check the preload system. Now this will differ between brands. Now on the Shimano system, you'd put the crank straight back on and you'd leave the two pinch bolts loose and then use the preload tool on the end cap to put it all together before adjusting the pinch bolts. Whereas on the race face system, it actually has a little collar here. So you have a tiny little Allen key head that goes in here and this collar actually rotates against the shell. So you wanna make sure that this is backed out against the crank arm before you put the crank arm in place. Slide the spacer up, put a small amount of grease on, assemble the system back together, tighten the right hand crank the drive side and then you would back this out against it and that would compress things together in the same way that Shimano does externally. Now it's slightly different between different systems but it's fairly easy to work out. Just remember if you do have a collar as part of the crank to loosen it off at this part of the process. Now just take care when you slide your crank back into place. Uh, make sure if yours had any spaces on that they go on first as they were. And then just delicately slide your crank back into position. Now before you install the other part of the crank, just to check a few things first. Uh, this one had one washer on the drive side, so I'm just gonna slide that in place now, so I can't forget that. You want a very small amount of grease just on the interface here. You could put it on the axle, you could put it on the inside of the crank there. And the last thing to check, uh, this sounds like a very obvious one, but make sure your crank arms are orientated correctly. Uh, it can be very easy to get one on that's just a slight bit out. I've got to make sure uh, they're 12 o'clock and six o'clock to correspond with each other. So I'm just gonna put a teeny bit of grease just on the end of the axle there. Really doesn't need much, just a very small amount. It's just installation purposes. And then, Offer the crank up in the correct position. Confirm it lines up with the one on the other side of the bike. And then start tightening the bolt until it starts pulling the crank back into place. Now, before you get carried away at this stage, it's important to look and see if there are torque settings on your crank arm. Now, this particular one says the bolt, the eight millimeter bolt, should be tightened to 50 newton meters. Uh, that's pretty tight. As it's a crank arm, it has a lot of pressure going through it. You don't want any chance of this coming loose, okay? So tighten this sufficiently. Again, so I've got the tire under my armpit here and I can put pressure on the left-hand non-drive side crank against this Allen key. So I'm just gonna tighten the Allen key as it pulls the crank into place. And that feels good to me. That's nice and tight. And we're gonna definitely check that though, just to see where we are with the torque setting. There we go. And that is tight and safe. Uh, now it's time to get the chain back on and this is why you needed to turn the clutch off or use the cage lock, because uh, otherwise you'd be fighting that rear derailleur spring. So just pull the derailleur cage down nicely, give you all the slack that you need, and then get the chain back onto the chain ring at this point. And then let the derailleur just take up the slack there and your chain sits on nicely. Now the last thing to do if your bike has a chain guide on there is to get this aligned again. Now something important to say, if you took your cranks off to change the chain ring size, for example, you might not find that the chain guide is compatible or your one might have to go in a slightly different position. Now many chain guides on the market will cater for 30, 32, 34 teeth and they will have little markings that correspond to those. So just make sure yours lines up. Uh, so all I need to do in this case, because it's a chain ring like for like, uh, was just to realign the guide. Is in the correct position to start with. Okay, last in then, pedals back on, go and hit the trails.
there we go, and that's how you remove and install a set of cranks. Like I said, there's a few variations, but the principle is pretty much the same. Uh, you just gotta take into account whether yours has self-extracting bolts and the preload system is different and which, which side actually comes off the actual crank axle. Uh, pretty simple stuff though, and useful to know nonetheless. Hopefully the video has been helpful for you. Uh, let us know if you've got any comments in the section underneath, and we'll see you in the next video. Ta-ra.